Are you a coach who's ready to gain your next ICF tier credential? I'm here to tell you today about some of the steps you can take to get there. Hi, I'm Lori Johnson, and I'm a professional certified coach and a relationship advisor here at Invite Change. And I'm going to talk today about the four steps you can take to get to the next tier of your ICF credential. But before we get into that, let's make sure that we're on the same page and you understand a little bit about the ICF coaching credential structure. There are three levels of ICF credentialing, ACC, Associate Certified Coach, PCC, Professional Certified Coach, and MCC, Master Certified Coach. Each one of those tiers requires a different number of learning hours, mentor coaching hours, and client coaching hours in order to gain your credential. So the first step is to really assess where you are and where it is that you're going next so that you can be prepared to move to the next level of credentialing. The ICF requires 60 learning hours for the associate certified coach level, the first tier, as well as 10 mentor coaching hours and 100 client coaching hours, which begin after your formal ICF accredited training begins. The next level is professional certified coach, and that requires 125 plus learning hours, 500 client coaching hours, and an additional 10 mentor coaching hours. And then finally, to get to your master certified coach level of credential, you need more than 200 learning hours. You also need 2,500 client coaching hours and additional mentor coaching and development. Now, each one of these levels of credentialing builds upon the previous one. So the 60 hours you received to get your ACC or Associate Certified Coach level of credentialing counts toward the 125 or 200 plus hours for your next tier. So you want to keep track of those hours, those mentor coaching hours, and those client coaching hours in a log so that when you're ready to apply, you have everything you need to be able to do that. So step one, in addition to getting together all the things you need for your credential application, really think about your next growth edge, your next level of development, and what excites you about moving forward as a coach. Now, you may have already begun to hone your way of being, your method, what makes you unique as a coach, but think about marrying that with the next level of learning in order to get a new perspective in order to enjoy the new learning that you'll engage in and in order to develop yourself into more coaching mastery. Step two, once you've assessed where the gaps and opportunities are, the next thing you want to think about is what kind of training works best for you. Some people like a lot of reading and book learning and lecturing, and people like me love the experiential process and the ability to practice and learn from others in the learning space. So think about where you are and how you learn best and which programs offer the opportunity for you to become comfortable with and excited about the learning that will carry you forward to completing the opportunity that you've chosen. So if you're watching this video, you've probably already been through a coach training program and you're maybe looking to move into the next level of credentialing. Now you don't have to stay with the first program that you chose. If you're like me, you might have enjoyed it, but you also might have found that there was something more that you were looking for. So really consider which programs offer exactly what you're looking for, and what will make you feel prepared for that next level of application. What will make you feel like you are really leaning into your greatest level of development as coach? 
You might look for referrals from friends who have already been through other programs. You might talk to a number of people, including graduates of the program, just to get more information about how this might be a good fit for you. Step three is to create your intention statement and really begin the journey meaningfully and mindfully. So here at Invite Change, we use something called an I am statement, which means intention plus attention equals manifestation. And we want people to come into the program not only prepared to begin, but ready to leave us as a satisfied graduate who got exactly what they needed and wanted in their coaching program. So start with that intention statement. What is it that you're really leaning into right now? What is it that presently is important to you and what will carry you forward into completing the program and completing the steps that you need to take in order to get that ICF credential? Let me give you an example of an intention statement. It could sound like I'm leaning into the ICF core coaching competencies at the PCC level of demonstration and partnering with my clients in a new way. It could be as simple as I am moving into mastery as a master certified coach. Whatever the intention statement is, it should guide your activities and your attention to this credential application throughout so that it pulls you forward to the destination. Step four is for you to gather everything together, all of your documentation, your letters and certifications that show what you've achieved in terms of your learning hours, mentor coaching hours, as well as your client coaching hours. Choose your recordings carefully so that you are choosing the best demonstration that you can submit to the ICF. Get extra mentor coaching hours if you feel like you need them. And once you're ready, make sure that you allow plenty of time to get your application in, especially if you're working against a renewal deadline. For example, when I was applying for my PCC level, of credentialing, my ACC level was expiring at the end of that year. And so I needed to leave a little bit more time than I did to be able to get that in on time. Now the ICF gives you a little bit of leeway if your application is just a little bit late, but just make sure that you're aware of when your current credential expires and when you want to get this application completed. And then set milestones for yourself along the way so that you achieve the goal in plenty of time for the ICF to review all of the things you've submitted and grant you your credential. So just remember that this process can take time. And there's a number of factors that go into it. You're going to want to review your own client coaching recordings to ensure that you're selecting the one that you're really confident about going to have to have that transcribed. So you want to leave a lot of space to be able to choose a transcription service that's convenient and affordable for you. If your client coaching session is not in English or a language that the ICF has assessors to listen and to assess, you're going to want to add additional time to make sure that you have your transcript transcribed into a language that the ICF is able to accommodate. So that might take some extra time as well. And if you wait till right before the end of the year, when the ICF is at its busiest, you can expect to wait a little bit longer to hear back about your application. So it might take several months rather than weeks for you to get news back about where you are in your credential approval. So once you hear back from the ICF and you know that you've reached the next level of development, the next piece of this last step is to celebrate. Celebrate with your delivery leaders, your cohort, your family, your friends, other coaches, and your clients. Really reach out to everybody and anybody to declare where you are in that milestone. It's a big accomplishment. And it's also a way of showing people and sharing with people how you are going to show up with them as coach, how much learning and training and mentor coaching you've received, and how much 
client coaching you've done so that they know exactly where you are as coach and they can hire you or refer you to others. And don't forget to update everything, your email signature, your social media profiles, your website materials. You can add your ICF badge to all of those platforms so that people are easily and readily able to see where you are in your level of ICF credentialing. Check out Ahmed's video right here to learn about his experience in this program as well. Now, I'm here to help you and answer any questions that you might have about programs, delivery, applications, ICF credentialing, and more. All you have to do is reach out and ask, and I'm happy to help or connect you to a graduate of one or more of our programs.